Hi, I wanted to just recap a couple of the uh, points from the lecture yesterday um, by Maya Schumer. Um, when she was talking, so in terms of uh, key takeaways to be attentive to, first of all, um, what is a biomarker? Um, these are changes that are found in the body or changes in the brain. Um, sometimes they have clear links to what's going on with the disease or the symptoms or the development. And these are used to diagnose diseases um, and in the future have the potential to be um, improved as ways to diagnose and also provide more objectivity in diagnosis and detection um, and also can inform treatment of diseases. Um, so classical studies um, uh, like this uh, set of studies um, by Bloomberg from 2003 and 2005 um, will sort of look at one brain area at a time and look for things like changes in the volume of certain brain structures or maybe changes in the activity of certain brain structures. So kind of one brain structure at a time, looking for changes and just lumping all of patients, all patients together. So in this case, um, taking just comparing a bunch of bipolar patients with a bunch of control patients, um, what they found is that um, on average, um, the amygdala and hippocampus were smaller in patients with bipolar disorder as compared to control patients. Um, and this is informative, and it or, and this tells us that um, sort of in general, or on average across many different people with bipolar disorder, um, one change that we see. Um, however, um, one of the limitations of this is that maybe some people with bipolar disorder have no change in their uh, amygdala, and other people do have a change in the size of the amygdala. Or maybe half the people with bipolar disorder have a significant have a way smaller amygdala. The other half are normal, and then um, the half of the normal amygdala have a way smaller hippocampus, and that could mean that there are two different types of bipolar disorder that are distinguished by this. Um, one of the um, newer frontiers in this kind of research is um, rather than lumping together all patients of a particular disorder, um, looking and seeing um, across multiple disorders um, what are the, um, the different types of patterns that we see. Um, so there are two main uh, methodological changes um, in this type of study as compared to sort of the classical study. One is that um, rather than averaging together everybody with the disorder, instead we're looking to see um, across the disorder if there are clusters of people that have multiple different changes all in common. So for example, um, there are um, uh, looking at people, um, in this case with major depressive disorder, um, there was one group that had changes in a structure called the insula and another in changes in a st structure called the ventrolateral um, prefrontal cortex. Um, a second group that had changes in the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex and the orbital frontal cortex and a few other areas. Um, a third group um, that had changes in um, the cingulate cortex here and a little bit of a change in the parietal lobe. And then a fourth group that had changes sort of in the uh, other parts of the parietal lobe, um, as well as in the thalamus and posterior cingulate cortex. Um, and so um, by looking across multiple people, large groups of people with depression and seeing that there are um, different um, subsets of those people that have um, altered resting activity in different brain areas, um, we can see that depression is heterogeneous. And then interestingly, um, the response to a particular uh, non-invasive kind of uh, stimulation called transcranial magnetic stimulation um, differed across these four different biotypes of depression. Um, so what this is doing is rather than lumping and averaging together everybody with a disorder, um, we're looking to see are there clusters of people with brain pattern A, clusters of people with brain pattern B, clusters of people with brain pattern C, and so on. Um, and also, rather than looking at one brain region at a time, looking at um, the correlated activity across many brain regions. Um, one other advantage, and this is not a, a, a this is the paper that Maya mentioned, but didn't actually show. Um, uh, one other advantage or potential use for all of this um, is not only in identifying the heterogeneity of symptoms, and maybe even having biomarkers that distinguish between depression with anxiety versus depression without, for example. Um, we can also um, look to see, first of all, get collections of people with bipolar disorder um, and then subdivide those collections, those people with bipolar disorder, into those that 
um, responded um, to lithium uh, versus those that didn't respond to lithium, meaning that lithium wasn't very effective as a treatment for the second group. Um, so first of all, we can do sort of a, a sort of like traditional sort of analysis across, but here across multiple brain areas instead of one, and see that in the bipolar patients versus the healthy controls, there are a few different brain structural um, changes in different parts of the brain. Um, then um, in um, the um, uh, comparing the patients who responded to lithium versus those who didn't, um, looking and seeing that um, in the lithium responsive patients, um, there are again brain areas that are different in size that, um, uh, than the ones uh, in the patients who did respond to lithium versus those who didn't. Um, this has the potential then that um, if a new patient comes in with bipolar disorder, and we want to know what kind of medicine is most likely to work for, for him or her, then what we can do is scan that patient's brain, see whether their brain is more similar to the patients who typically do respond to lithium or more similar to the patients who don't, and, um, and then have a better guess at what is likely to work, um, and so know whether lithium is a good choice for a first medication or whether something else like lamictal or something else might be a better first choice for a medication. Um, and so that is, uh, those are kind of the main um, ideas to keep in mind with this study.